Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be testing out a new, well new to my collection, a new color corrector and concealer combination. I'm talking about the Kiko Beauty Full Coverage Concealer as well as the Kiko Color Correcting Concealer Palette. Now the palette retails for $16.99. You get five different color correcting shades to choose from. Each shade is meant to color correct a different concern. For green, you would put that on top of red. So like blemishes, any kind of like rosacea, redness around the nose, that kind of thing. Lilac you would use on top of any dullness. And of course, these two down here, these are the ones that I want dark circle color correctors. Now the concealer retails for $12.99 and you can only find it in eight different shades. I grabbed the shade number three. Not too sure if that's gonna be a little bit too bright, a little bit too light but we're gonna work with it. Now let's go over the details. We're gonna start off with the concealer. This is supposed to be a very high coverage concealer. The formula is nice and creamy, and it says that this is ideal for minimizing medium to serious imperfections, such as age spots, moles, rosacea, and scars. Now it doesn't mention dark circles, but we're still gonna use it underneath the eyes. Let's see what kind of coverage we get. As far as the details for the color correcting palette, it is very minimal. It says it has five colored concealers, each of which helps to conceal imperfections and enhance your complexion. Very straightforward. So other than my skincare, I haven't placed anything on my skin. I don't have a primer, I don't have a setting spray, because sometimes I will start my makeup my makeup days with setting spray um, in order to create a nice like setting spray sandwich on my face, but I don't have any of that today. We're gonna start off with just the corrector. And I think what I'm gonna do is one side I will color correct with this guy, and then I will apply the concealer on top of that. And depending on what the shade looks like, I might color correct over here with a different color corrector, or I might just apply it onto the skin. And the reason why I say that is because if this is too light and I apply it onto the under eye area by itself, I already know it's gonna look gray. I know it's gonna look awful. And I'm just kind of like, you know, setting it up for failure. So I'm gonna work over here first. And I think, let me swatch these for you guys. So this is what the green looks like. Very green, very creamy consistency, by the way. This is the lilac shade. Like that. Now this is kind of a peachy tone, but more yellow, I would say. Looks like that. This is the one that I believe I'm gonna be working with, which is more of the peach, the peach shade. See that? And even that might be a little too light to color correct on my complexion, but we'll see. And then you have this like white shade, almost white. And I think you could use that for like highlighting. That would be like my only guess um, because it's pretty white. So now let's go ahead and apply the actual shade that I'll be using, which is peach. And I'll just apply it right here. As far as the consistency, yes, this is very, very light, very lightweight. It almost feels like, you know what it reminds me of? The Charlotte Tilbury. That's what this consistency reminds me of. Kind of like a creamy turned powdery consistency. Does that make sense? It's like very, very lightweight. Now this is the shade of the concealer that I grabbed. Honestly, I wish I would have grabbed a different shade, but there aren't very many to choose from. So that was kind of an issue. That's what it looks like. And it looks a little too light. So I am gonna be color correcting this under eye. So this is my Smashbox and Becca under eye brightening corrector in the shade medium. All right, next, foundation. Let me apply that and I'll be right back. All right, we are back with foundation. This side, guys, I don't know about this. It already looks horrendous. Now the consistency on this concealer is quite thick. And because of that, I don't wanna grab it with my finger and apply it directly onto the under eye area. As a matter of fact, I probably should have applied the corrector with a brush because it too has a very thick consistency. So I'm just gonna take it with a brush instead. And this is what I'm gonna to use to apply it onto the under eye area. 
As far as the corrector, I'm already seeing a ton of issues. It is moving around. It looks very, very dry and it's not correcting in the best way. <laughs> the brush application is working to blend this out a little bit better, but I honestly don't know how long this is going to last, especially if it acts anything like the corrector. We're in for a short day with this concealer. I'm going to apply a tiny bit more right here. I like the brush application because it does keep the layer really, really minimal, which I think is crucial with this concealer. You can go heavy really quickly. Now with the brush though, I don't feel like it's really depositing much of anything onto the under eye area. And that's probably a good thing, honestly, so that we don't overdo it. Okay, so there is that. Obviously, a little too light. Just a little too light for me. I sometimes run into the issue of applying my Oma Beauty setting powder onto the under eye area and then ending up with like quite yellow or like peachy looking under eye. Like it's just too, like it picks up the pigment. If my concealer is not completely set, then it looks, when you apply a powder underneath the eye, it just, it kind of wets it. So it makes it look a bit deeper. Um, but with this one in particular, I kind of want it to look a little bit deeper. So I'm gonna go in with my trusty Trip and Smooth setting powder. This one's in the shade Light which looks like this. See, it does have a little bit of a pigment. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that setting powder. I feel like I lost coverage now that I've said it. What is going on? I don't know if I can save this makeup look. Um, it looks awful. Horrible. It looks heavy but not in the best way. I mean, there's some makeup that looks very high coverage, pretty heavy, but that, you know, it overall sits very smooth. And so, you know, yeah, it looks heavy, but it looks good. Like the one that I can like, just think of off the top of my head is this one drop coverage from um, Catrice. I love this concealer so much. It is so full coverage though. And the way that I apply it, I just kind of let it sit underneath the eye area for just a little bit before going in and blending it out. That gives me full coverage. And sometimes it can look like, okay, yeah, you've got full coverage on, but it looks good. This, that's not that type of coverage. <laughs> this is not that type of coverage at all. Let me bring you guys in. All right, here it is. Do you see what I'm talking about? The coverage has just disappeared. The under eye area looks excessively dry. The products look like they are not they're not here to party. They're not here to stay. <laughs> They're definitely just kind of passing by <laughs> because this is going to be gone. I can almost guarantee it that this is going to be gone by midday. I don't even know if I should wear it. Honestly, I was going to push through. I was going to push through the day, but after sitting with it, it's been about like a good five minutes. This is not getting any better. The way that I see it is like, what is the point when I already hate it i already know and i it already looks like it's just you know kind of disappearing it looks like it's absolutely going to separate it's already separating it's already settling it's already just looking not so great i hate to cut it this short i really do like to push through with products and give them the benefit of the doubt but in this case i don't know why i would be pushing through the day with this product or these products rather. Um, definitely not worth the money, definitely not worth the time, at least not in my opinion. Perhaps if you're using it all over the face, like the rest of the face, like maybe the forehead or the cheek or the whatever, just not the under eye area, you know? Um, perhaps they would work great, but color correcting for me is essential underneath the eye, not everywhere else. So personally, it's a no. It's an absolute no from me, which is unfortunate because I was actually really looking forward to using these. Um, I figured new concealer, new color corrector, but unfortunately it's a no go. <laughs> no. Thank you all so much for watching. I truly hope that you enjoyed this brief review. I feel bad even saying that. So does Luna.
If you have purchased either one of these and have made it work, please let me know how so that I can try them again. But as of right now, I will never reach for these. Never again. So uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing if you're a subscriber. If not, make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss out on future videos. And also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram, guys. Don't forget it, where I absolutely love to interact with you all. Take care, and I will see you all in my next video. Mwah. Bye. Thank you.